All right. Good morning, everybody. I'm excited to uh, talk about some tools regarding the AutoCAD Plant 3D program. Uh, I definitely will uh, keep things high level, top level, so we can get everything uh, packed into an hour. And I want to make sure I've got some time to uh, get you some uh, some answers to your questions. Uh, certainly, I know you'll have a lot. Um, we could do a definitely a deep dive if if down the road you want to take a look at at more of these. Uh, um, these tool sets found in the AutoCAD only one uh, package. We, we definitely have a lot of different tool sets that we can work with. Um, I'm sure we can set up a time uh, to uh, really get into the weeds for you. So I'll, uh, like I said, I'll keep this kind of top level, see if we can uh, uh, get you guys a good understanding of what it is that these tools can do for you, uh, especially from coming from a background in manufacturing. Uh, we'll, we'll try to keep it geared towards that on how to uh, um, to go from start to finish with the AutoCAD Plant 3D program. So I'm not usually one to use a, a PowerPoint, but uh, I figure, hey, this will be a good way to uh, um, keep you guys uh, organized with with where I want to go with this. We're we're actually going to look at a lot of 2D tools and then move it into more of the 3D. So on the 2D side. AutoCAD has this PNID package that is built into the AutoCAD program. The nice thing about this is that we can uh, start there and move it into 3D. Heck, we could even start with 3D and move it into 2D. But we could build uh, piping, uh, all their accompanying components, uh, the structures that go with it, automatically output isometrics, which is more of a 2.5D uh, view, uh, kind of a line drawing of, of our piping. And uh, we could do the, the full-on orthographics, top, front, right, including a 3D isometric in there. And, uh, and we can have, uh, um, you know, your traditional AutoCAD layers and shading and colors, and, and it'll look real nice. So um, uh, one great function, the, the last item list on there is that bill of material, which uh, I think is an amazing tool just in itself that you don't have to add everything up automatically or, or manually. You don't have to go through every sheet and, and did I get this, did I get that? Did, uh, what about this? Oh, we forgot something, we made a change. The bill of material here is automatically created and pushed and, and published onto the drawing set. So um, things are more in line with, with uh, maybe some other tools if you're familiar with maybe like an Autodesk Inventor where uh, the, the drawings can be tied and associated directly with that model. So fantastic tool for sure. We'll, uh, we'll dive into the uh, 2D side of things now, and we'll see what we could do this. Uh, oh, my, my bad. Let's talk about who could actually use this thing, right? So engineers, designers, uh, anyone who has to document uh, plants, you could have uh, a new, complete, new, uh, does not exist in the real world plant, but you want to design this up on the front end, or we could certainly look at an existing facility, something that uh, if you've got some point cloud tools, you could uh, definitely uh, partner up with us. We could help you out with that maybe with this new BLK, BLK 360, nice little uh, um, coffee-sized uh, um, scanner. I mean, maybe you're going to go old school, you got a tape measure, you're good to go. Uh, we want to get some existing facility data into CAD, we could use that as well. So we got two different uh, workspaces we'll, we'll tap into. Uh, so whoever's using the program, if you're familiar with the AutoCAD package, you'll have a workspace in there. One is the PNID side, this is going to be the conceptual process flow, PFDs, PNIDs, and then we've got the, the more of the 3D space, the workspace there, this is the physical representation of how everything is going to flow. So I'll show you both of those uh, workspaces as we move through the program. What's so great about this is that it's, it is just built straight up on AutoCAD. So if you are familiar with how to draw a line, a circle, an arc, a rectangle, if you know layers, all that good stuff inside of AutoCAD, you are well equipped to begin to use the PNID portion of AutoCAD Plant 3D. Uh, it's just the standard DWG file format. What's great about this, though, is it takes it one step further. Instead of just having a set of drawings, we've got a project manager, which allows us to group everything together in a nice, um, uh, could call it a tree, you could call it a model browser. Uh, you've got just a, a hierarchy of drawings that visually you can see what is included in my project, my complete set of PNIDs and PFDs. 
Okay, so I mentioned this can be focused in on the 2D for sure. So we'll take a look at that. Moving forward, um, what can you do after you draw that P and ID? Well, certainly you could pull out the data about the data. I might call that the metadata. It's it's literally the the AutoCAD properties of each object that you've created. I might call those symbols. You may be familiar with more. How about a block? If you've ever heard of that that term in the AutoCAD world, a block. It's this is an intelligent block. And you've got the different uh, standards that we can utilize here, PIP, ISO, JIS, ISO, DIN. Uh, there's a lot uh, already prepackaged tool palettes ready to go. And when you place those those symbols or those, those blocks onto your 2D drawing, we can use the data manager to extract that data and look at it like a table-driven database where you can modify, manipulate that, kind of like Excel. Gosh, you, you can actually export that to Excel, make some changes there to that table, and save that table, and import that back into the data manager. So you, you can actually do some data manipulation outside of the program itself and, uh, and get all your part numbers, descriptions, materials, uh, could be vendor numbers, all that data. You could, you could use uh, an outside spreadsheet editor for that. Now, once you've gotten all that data in there, certainly you'd like to report on that. You can run some some tools for reporting in order to get a CSE file or a, or a spreadsheet file, and uh, um, you know get get some some um, some data maybe to purchasing. You know, maybe manufacturing wants to know some some data, uh, extract that, pull that out, so they're not just looking straight at a drawing. They can get that in in a in a table format. Now here's a great little function here, validation. The ability to error check. I, th I think that's an amazing thing there. Maybe you forgot something, maybe you typed something wrong. Uh, the program will validate that and, and uh, ensure that you, you did include everything. Here's an example. Maybe you've drawn a P and ID and you'd like to see that on the 3D model. Okay, so we'll get there in a little bit, but maybe you've drawn that, that valve or that pump on the P and ID, but we may have forgotten that on the 3D side. Well, this validation tool will let you know, hey, we, we forgot the 3D model on here. And vice versa, you can go the other way around. If you build it on the 3D, it'll let you know, uh, gosh, user, you, you forgot it on the 2D. So it'll tell you all these things. and We can uh, validate that and make sure that we are accurate. So our, our bills of material are looking great. Our drawings are coming out correct. We're not wasting a lot of time, energy, and money moving forward. Okay, so that's the P and ID side of things. Let's go one step further into the 3D space, okay? I did mention you can start 3D, then go to 2D, you can go to 2D, then go to 3D, it's, it's, it's all great, whatever direction you wanna go to, but it's all still in the same AutoCAD plant 3D tool. It's the same package, okay? If we're, if we're moving in from 2D to 3D, here's a great thing. You, you don't actually need to know AutoCAD 3D. So, so you may be familiar with the 3D modeling space of AutoCAD, but here they, they've got some pre-packaged parametric driven models that we can use to build tanks and vessels and pumps and filters, exchangers, boilers, so on and so forth. Heck, do you want to throw a concrete pad on there? Go for it. Footings. Structural steel, there's a complete library on, on that end. We've got uh, uh, the ANSI standard in there. Certainly uh, Canadians are in there. We've got DIN, ISO, so on and so forth. You can look up those flanges, wide flanges, pull them in. you got channel, uh, angle, and uh, start going to town on this thing. You build those structures and uh, staircases, ladders, railing. It's all prepackaged parametric. Okay, if I were to use a maybe a different program for that. It, it could take me a while to set those up. Here, it's already ready to go. You can adjust, let's say, for example, on railing, we can adjust the, the, the post height, the rail height. Is there a mid rail? Is there a kick plate? It's all built in as we create those 3D models. So it is parametric driven, meaning it's controlled by a parameter, a number, some sort of equation to keep everything together. Now, once we complete the 3D side of things with the plant 3D workspace, now uh, you can see there it says plant layout. Okay, we've gotten our our uh, 
complete layout done. Now we can have the program automatically create these isometric two and a half D drawings. So I'll show you some of those, then move it into the orthographic. So, so even though the ISO, the ISO and the ortho, those are like a 2D flat kind of drawing, they're created and extracted from the 3D model, okay? So fantastic workflow, what they've got uh, labeled out here with the AutoCAD Plant 3D tool. So we'll, we'll definitely take a look at that. Some of these things are, are repeat. How about this, validation, right? We've already talked about cross-checking that between the PNID. Data manager, same thing, it's a spreadsheet. We can, we can look at those 3D models and, and see how we're doing. You could run a report and say, let's, let's pull the size of every valve by a particular manufacturer found in this particular location of our plant facility. So you might say, yeah, we've got some, uh, some coordinates here. This is uh, section B3. Show me all the valves that are six inches in that location. Pull that report, boom, ready to go. Maybe you got some long lead time items. You know, hey, I know uh, we're working with a particular manufacturer on these valves. Um, maybe we got some pumps that, that require extra, extra lead time on there. Let's run a report. If you find that manufacturer, you know, and now I'm using some, some, uh, some tool sets uh, maybe from Excel, right? You can uh, filter that down and find the appropriate things you need. And uh, now you, you're on your way and you're able to organize that a little better. We've also got spec-driven 3D models, which is awesome. <laughs> Built in, we've got these, this giant jumbo catalog now that we can pull all the different models, all the different specs. Uh, it's already built in, all the size of your flanges, your valves. Uh, you've got um, uh, raised face slip-on, you got uh, 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 weld necks, uh, so on and so forth. Socket weld, um, shoot, you got some OLEDs in there. I mean, it's all built in on the 3D model, so you don't need to uh, have to worry about starting from, from nothing, moving into 3D. There are some other libraries that we can download from Autodesk with their little, uh, I'm gonna call it quote unquote, their app store. Uh, maybe you've got some things maybe on the TC Ferrell side. You've got some, some pharmaceutical type things. You, you want uh, clean sanitary fittings. You could download those from Autodesk and pull those, those specs and catalogs into the program, okay? Pretty cool. You don't have to uh, really um, start from nothing. But cool thing is you can create your own models, you can create your own tool sets, you definitely can uh, uh, bring in your own specs, and uh, heck, even from other programs if you wanted to, you could do that, right? Bring that in, import those, get those all looking real nice, little tables, uh, should I use a T here, should I use an elbow here, should I use a, uh, just weld in, uh, how about a doubler, do you need that doubler on there, okay. or a, a, a repat, right? Okay. All right, let's take a look now. Next page. Oh, I'm ready to show you something. Let's do that. Let's jump in a little bit. How about on the 2D side? I did uh, want to show you some, some PNIDs. Real, real easy before I get into the actual CAD program. Just here's something that I was able to cook up here. It took me about, I don't know, 45 minutes or so to build this from scratch. Um, you know, I was able to pull some some pumps from some blocks, and they've got the, the intelligent, uh, I don't want to call them attributes, but those properties about those were able to come through real nice and easy. The, the pipelines, I can copy and paste these, these tanks over here and uh, tag them appropriately so our data manager is looking great. Got some valves up top, some nozzles, some manways. Okay, this is a nice little tool here. I got some off-page connectors, so every drawing can literally be tied together. Instrumentation control valves, <laughs> pretty neat. Okay, so this is just one one example of a PNID that I was able to create coming out of this program. Of course, certainly we've got our uh, AutoCAD title block. It does extract the data from the project. Let's take a look here at, at uh, maybe another sheet. I think this says this is uh, off-page connector 9001, coming from drawing 101. Now let's take a look here. We're right over there, here we go. So there's the other portion of that 9001 going to drawing 103. Okay, so this, this one took me um, yeah, maybe about an hour, maybe 30, 
30 minutes to an hour, kind of depend. I think I had some kids running around somewhere when I set this up, but we can set up all this data tied to the models. Got some insulation here as well. Okay, you could definitely do that on the piping. I did mention though, as you do the, the 2D PNID, if you do have some things like ice, uh, insulation, that can reflect on the 3D model as well. Pretty slick. Okay, coming down in here, uh, instrumentation gauges, level gauges, so on and so forth. Okay, so just a nice little example of what that can look like. Maybe I'll start drawing some of these out for you as we go. So let's just give that a good minimize here. There we go. So here we are, Plant 3D 2019. Here's the program. Certainly, I could start with a PNID or on the 3D side, right? I've got my recent documents. Let's take a look at an existing project I've already got built. Here's that uh, drawing I was showing you. There we go. Model space, paper space, all good, right? Okay. Here's that other drawing. There we go. You may notice that little window that's popping up there. That's actually our drawing checker that's, that's flashing by right there. This is. This is just making sure that every object on there has been uniquely tagged, right? So from a manufacturing standpoint, right, you don't want to buy the wrong thing too many times or more than once, right? Buy the right thing, you're ready to go, okay? The accuracy here, awesome, okay? Maybe I'll just create a little test drawing for you. Oh, ooh, got some mess here. I guess I've been playing around a little bit. I'm just going to use some regular AutoCAD skill sets, right? Just some select. And uh, I'll just erase that, okay? No big deal. There we go. Okay. Mentioning uh, the workspaces, right? Here, here we go. AutoCAD workspaces. So I can go from 3D piping to PNID, PIP. Okay, so let's just switch this over. You may notice I've got different tools at the top and different tool palettes. And I'll just bump this into the PNID PIP. Here we go. Got a tool palette somewhere. Where'd you go? Two monitors, right? Okay, there she is. Let's dock that so she doesn't run away again. <laughs> okay, so lines, equipment, valves, settings, instrumentation. All right, let's let's just drop a couple things in here for kicks. Actually, I can actually cycle through this. Maybe I want to start drawing on one end, but I'll click that, place it in there. What kind of pump are we looking at? Let's go with uh, pump 100, and we'll assign that like so. There we go. I could certainly drag another one in if I wanted to, but uh, hey, it's AutoCAD, so it's all good. Let's just do a little copy and pasting, right? Okay, you might be familiar with, with how that works. Um, that is just a control click, but I did mention you can also copy. You can drop that in like that. There we go. And I got a couple question marks. It does say that, hey, this should be uniquely tagged, so I could go ahead and change the number there. We've also got some great functions here. Just give me the next available number based off of uh, a predefined set. So it did say 001 is available. Okay, I can actually tell the project, let's start at one number. Maybe I wanted to start at, at, at 3,000. And then if I click the next number, it would go ahead and tell me, yeah, you're, you're available at 3,000, 3,001, 3,002. So there's a couple pumps that I've been able to draw out. Easy peasy. Let's grab an exchanger for kicks here. There it is. Exchanger 1, let's see, 001, okay. Some of these have some, some nozzles already built in there. Uh, certainly I could add my own. If I don't uh, feel I, I, I got enough, I can, I can add my own nozzle in there. There we go, looks good. Tag it if I want to, okay. My kid says easy peasy, there it is. Maybe I don't like this one. Yeah, uh, that's the wrong type. Oh goodness, you know, let's let's exchange that out. So certainly I could substitute these and then reconnect that nozzle. All right. Wow, we can get crazy in here, huh? So you can swap these out for anything that uh, 
that uh, you're looking for if you did happen to make a mistake on the front end. Okay. Actually, these these pumps, same thing. All right. Let's change those out. One particular portion of of a training class, if we were to offer that up and and to help guide you through some training, we can teach you how to build your own symbols. Right. Uh, if you're familiar with a block, I think you'll be okay. But but we there's definitely some more. Um, uh, things that we need to do to that block to make it more intelligent to how the program would behave. Okay, manways, specialty items, strainers, right, resistors. What else here? Equipment. Heck, let's grab a tank. Let's do that. Let's draw this in here. Got some scaling functions here. That looks good. If you don't like the uh, Scaling that you used. Hey, it's AutoCAD. Yes, we like AutoCAD. Right click, go to properties. We can always take a look at our traditional AutoCAD properties and view all the extra data about this. So you got some sort of manufacturer here, model number, supplier, where's it coming from, right? We've got uh, material of construction, area. Whew, looks like I, I typed that in a while ago. What's this lightning bolt here? Let's take a look. Our drawing properties, there it is, drawing property. That should be an A area, uh, A2, okay? There we go. Automatically updated our drawing, ready to go, okay? Let's go back in there, let's take a look. Scroll this down, all right, there we go. Here's our scale factor in the X. And in the Y, let's make that 1.75. All right, hey, it's just AutoCAD, right? Here we go. Operating pressure, width. I, let's say this is, uh, how about 72? Now let's go 144 by 60. There we go. Close it up. Okay, maybe I do want some, some additional information about this. Certainly, there we go. 60 by 144, right? Just dropped it in there. And uh, this, this actually can get moved around anywhere I want that, okay? So this is the workflow to get our, our objects on there. And now I've got a set of lines here. It could be jacketed, could be pipeline, secondary lines, primary. You've got uh, instrumentation lines as well. Watch this. Uh, oh, this is pretty cool here. Ready? Boom. Let's uh, see what happens when I draw this. <clears throat> Certainly we will get uh, an automatic nozzle that came out of that tank. I know you're all muted. If you weren't, I'd hear clapping in the background because that was awesome. So keep going here. Certainly bring this out. There we go. And I'll just draw these in. And we'll just connect in. I'm just using regular AutoCAD snaps. Now we can assign that tag to that pipeline. So uh, what size is this? All right, pre-built in. You can always filter this down if you got some sizes that uh, you don't ever use. Maybe three-quarter, that's off the, off the grid. We don't want to use that one. We can delete that from our list. Okay, so let's go with uh, an 8-inch on the discharge, grab our spec. We mentioned it's spec-driven. Okay, let's go with uh, CS150. Yeah, heck, let's go a little bigger, 300-pound class. Okay, what do we got flowing through this thing, huh? Let's go general and then assign it some sort of line here. Could be pipe schedule. Maybe we want a little drop down there. You can, and of course, you can add all any kind of property you want. Could be what kind of paint on there, what kind of, uh, um, you know, post weld heat treatment. What do you got? It's all fair game, okay? Highly customizable. Go ahead and assign this tag. Just drop it in. You can see it automatically wipes out the line. If I move this up and out, then certainly it repairs the line. That looks great. I like that, okay? Maybe I need that in another section. I'll just go ahead and annotate that. Vertically, same line, same information. Okay. Grab this one. Let's go ahead and make that uh, sign tag. Let's grab 10 inch. There we go. So on, so forth. Looks good. Okay, so that's that's our workflow. Not, not too crazy, huh? I think uh, using the old AutoCAD skill, uh, maybe maybe you got some some maybe some old technique and and you start drawing some polylines, All right? Certainly we could use that too. Maybe you've got an old drawing, I, I love this. Maybe you got some old legacy stuff and it is a bunch of AutoCAD lines and drawings. You can always take that object 
convert it to a PNID object. So let's, let's make that a primary line now. Click, boom, now I've got flow. Now I, it's, it was a line, now I have that ability now to go ahead and tag this, uh, give it the size. Like I said, maybe I want to reverse the flow. There we go, right click, reverse flow. There we go. And that validation tool I mentioned, it will check for this. If, if you have some inconsistencies in your flow, it'll check on that. It'll definitely look at that and say, hey, yeah, it's, this one's going that way, that one's going the other way. <laughs> Please give it a check. So, for example, if I placed on a check valve on this thing, drop that in there, and if I reverse that flow, uh-oh, <laughs> right? Let's give it a size here. Notice I got that little dot on there. Yeah, let's, let's give a size to the pipeline and watch that valve automatically update, okay? Let's keep going here. Maybe I've got uh, a couple other things. Low valve, drop it on there. Certainly I could copy that from one area to another. There we go. Okay. Erase that if I want to. Normally open at the moment. Right click, normally closed. Notice it uh, swaps that out, changes the coloring there. Make that flanged if I needed to. So we've got some end connections that we can we can modify as well. Threaded, welded. Okay, open. See it all all swaps out real nice. Let's change that to flange. There we go. So on and so forth. Okay. How about a control valve? What kind of body and actuator do we have on there? Let's go globe and. Position and solenoid, here we go, click OK. Looking good. Tag it. Now we do have our information here as far as our instrumentation. How do you want that to look? What area is it in? You know, hey, this is in the main control box. Um, type control valve, flow controller, loop number, let's give it a number there, and assign that down. Okay, so we have some options here as well. Just drag that over, it comes with the leader. Okay. Moving forward, instrumentation, right, same thing. Okay, drop some of these in. Looks good. We'll go to the leader, attach it, yes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just using regular AutoCAD at this point, right? So, what area? Main control box. What type is it? Let's take a look. Oh, wow, goodness. Okay, we got a couple of things in here, huh? Here we go. Okay, hot dog, huh? There it is. So this workflow is then what we would carry through into validating, making sure that we're good before we take that to manufacturing, okay? All right, so let me give that a little save. That looks good. I like that. Now at this point, we want to take this into the, the uh, just take a look at our, our layers here, making sure that we're looking good. Here we go. Pre-packaged in are those layers. Oops, gone. Looks like they flashed for a moment. Oh, man. Well, if you happen to have seen that, I know we can go back to the recording and click on that. We would have seen that those layers were showing uh, some pre-built-in layers. Uh, we had, uh, oh, man, they're still open. Looks like I got a bit of a bug here. Um, so they were showing that, that we had uh, um, manufacturer, or, or I'm sorry, mechanical process could be uh, um, just basic text. Right, all your annotations, okay? So that was all built in there with that layer control. All right, let's see if I can somehow bail out of this. All right. Cool, so I'm done on the, there it is, there's my layer manager. <laughs> so I'm done on the 2D side, okay? So I built up some 2D. Certainly I wanna move this now into the 3D environment, okay? So I've got a different folder here on my project man, uh, manager. 
And now I can begin to look at how about my structure, okay? Uh, I, I mentioned before you got, uh, here, here's my layers. Yay, it's back. <laughs> Let's dock that. Okay, there she is. So there, there are some layer control here. But uh, I've got everything from, like I mentioned before, railings and ladders and steel and, and uh, grating and, and uh, man, you know, lions and tigers and bears, we got it all, okay? There's a built-in floor to this, if you will. You can see that grid in that 3D space. I've got that floor hanging out here. Let's take a look at another structure. Here we go. Same thing, right? Able to build that structure. It's got all this pre-packaged as far as the, uh, the workspace goes. So I'll just switch this over to 3D piping. All right. So, you know what's great about this? Across the board structure, man. Look at all these pre-built in. I don't have to have to worry about building up uh, this library here. A lot of wide flanges, huh? So AISC, Canadian, DIN. Let's go look over here. Got my uh, L shapes. Okay. I can type in. Let's go six by six. There we go. Shows me everything six by six. Uh, this looks very, very, very close to uh, an Autodesk Inventor if you've ever used the frame generator, right? So from a manufacturing standpoint, a lot of uh, users, have, uh, they may have already been coming from that, that uh, Autodesk Inventor package. So there you go, same, same concepts there. And I can pick and choose my, my properties that I want. Certainly it's AutoCAD, you got mass properties ready to go. And if I build in any kind of uh, uh, a grid, if you will, to this, here's a little test grid. Let's uh, take a look at our layers. Certainly turn our grid back on. I've got this grid. There we go. I can adjust the uh, X, Y, Z values. But uh, there's a nice looking grid. And now I'm able to, at this point, make sure I'm on the correct layer. There we go. Grid. And we'll change this over to steel structure. Let's get some members on there. I'll just go ahead and uh, start picking a couple things. Go from here to here. There it is, okay? Now I do have the ability to copy and paste this. Let's change the coloring a little bit. So I might select like this and just use our regular copy function. Get in there and I can copy this over like so. All right. At this point, it is reg regular AutoCAD. You could you could rotate these, copy, paste them, all that good stuff. Okay. All right. Let's see what else we can do. I'm going to grab my member and I'm going to change the settings on this. Maybe I'll um, adjust where this should be located. We'll go at the top on this one. And I'm just going to pick a couple lines. Have these placed in here. There you go. And boom, there she is. Okay. So that's uh that's the workflow as far as creating those. Uh not too shabby. Now of course uh you know we're gonna talk about how do you manufacture this. Well you're looking at the top of this, oh uh, oh gosh. I can't make that. <laughs> let's let's fix this. What do we do, right? So we do have some functions here in cutting these out. So I did mention if if you've ever uh seen um Autodesk Inventor are very similar in, in how we can perhaps miter those together. Hey, look at that, right? There it is. Okay, maybe I want to get this cut down. I, I could certainly cut this back. There we go. And now I've been able to trim that down. Of course, it's just a quick example, right? But uh, so there she, there she is, right? Just a couple, couple clicks and we're able to miter that and cut those up. There are actually some automatic cutting tools as well. I just click on this specify cut back gap. Maybe you need some full weld penetration on there. You need a little bit of gap on that. I can just select everything and we'll just see what, what this thing does here. It, it did a couple things, right? 18 or two are trimmed. Uh, really what it is on this one is if, if they're intersecting in the middle anywhere, then they'll go ahead and trim those up automatically. Okay. So, uh, if you design this up the right way, you can see here that, see how that one is, uh, been trimmed back real nice. Come across the other side. If you, if you design these the right way, then certainly they'll trim out automatically um, in, a, in a nice little fashion, okay? Of course, there are other tools that Autodesk has, part of this, this only one AutoCAD um, uh, tool set. 
we could take this into the AutoCAD Advanced Steel program here. We'd click this, grab our structure, and move that over to the Advanced Steel program. That now will allow us to uh, have our, our, uh, our gussets, our bolt sets, um, DXFs that can be extracted, all placed on a cut sheet, and, uh, and, and you can go ahead and get those laser cut, plasma cut, water jet, any of those kinds of things through the Advanced Steel export. Then go ahead and remember, it's all AutoCAD. It's all AutoCAD. It's the DWG. Go ahead and bring that back into uh, our, our drawing here, and you've got all the detail you need uh, for manufacturing through that uh, Advanced Steel program, okay? This plant 3D structure tool is designed more top level. Let's just take a look at it. This is generally what it should look like. Maybe it's a good starting point. Get that over to the Advanced Steel program for, uh, for manufacturing. Get that dialed in on that on that uh, that program there. You could do it here, but I'd say, hey, uh, use the use the functions, use the tool sets that Autodesk has provided. Um, that's a fantastic tool for that. Great program, okay? All right, of course, grading, right? You see we've got little cutouts here, all that good stuff, right? Railings, yay, looks good, okay? I like that. Let's go ahead and uh, wipe this out. There we go, she's done. Okay, I'm just gonna, Close this out of here. That was our structure drawing. Now moving forward, remember we're talking workflow here. Let's get this to the point where we can manufacture some of this stuff. Okay, so we know where our structure is. Let's go ahead and begin to place in our equipment around the structure. Okay, that would make sense. Well, where do you want these things to actually sit? Okay, you know, this boiler's on the second floor. Okay, moving forward, I have this filter in this little stand here. Okay, what else? Oh goodness, got a little drop there. Sure. We're, we're dripping. Okay. <laughs> that just sets a nice little visual. It says, hey, you're you're not actually hooked up to anything, right? But keep in mind we're just focused on the equipment at this point. We're not uh we're not uh here to hook up any piping quite yet. But hey, it's all layers, right? So I could hide that structure if I wanted to. It's it's all just extra in there. And I could hide that drawing and just see strictly my equipment okay so let's take a look let's just turn that off for now there we go frozen okay looking good close that now how did i get these on here wow gosh that's nice okay let's take a look home equipment here we go different types available to me, heat exchangers, boilers, pumps, tanks, vessels, right? And these are all built in, right? Certainly, like I said, you can build your own. You've got some shapes that you can use here to add to it, different kinds of heads, uh, torus spherical, two to ones, uh, shells or cylinders, right, for your shells, uh, so on and so forth, okay? Let's go in here, how about, uh, let's grab some pumps. Let's go with some vertical inlines, there we go parametric driven right maybe i've got some templates i want to i want to pull through okay what kind of filter boilers i mean pre-built in you can pull these from project to project to project nice thing about that is you've got some common things you're always pulling it'll go ahead and grab those so let's take a look here i can adjust the sizes if i wanted to certainly jump in here i've got uh, other dimensions i can i can focus in on okay I just change those parametrically, give them descri descriptions, but hey, here's my AutoCAD properties. Remember, it's just AutoCAD, so you have AutoCAD properties. You can fill those in now, or you could fill those in a little bit later. Okay, I'll click on Create. There we go. Let's give it a nice little rotation if I wanted to. There it is. Okay. I'll just copy a few of these down. There we go. Let's say, let's go uh, uh, eight feet this way. 16 feet that way, there we go. Looking nice, okay? Certainly I could build a little concrete slab if I wanted to, I, I do have uh, the ability to do that with, with these functions. Jump in here, let's grab concrete, how big is it? And it'll place that on here, and then I could put these on just like I've done with these pumps here, okay? Right click, properties, it's all AutoCAD, right? Go ahead and tag this with some kind of number, manufacturer, okay. Mm. 
There we go. AutoCAD property. Okay. Now, if I were to take a look at how about our data manager, I mentioned that before. Now, certainly, I could bring this in, different object types, right? Let's go down into my pump section. There we go. There's the one I just typed in, right? So I would go ahead and fill in the, the rest of the, the properties here. But it tells you where it's located, right? Is it new when you bought it, right? Tagging, okay? Item code, right? So this is our data manager where we can bring it all down, view every valve, right? We could certainly filter those down. Uh, maybe I'm looking at just this, this current drawing. Maybe I wanted to pull something, a, a, a more specific valve list, nozzle list, equipment list, right? Show me all the tanks and pumps, okay? I did mention, though, that you can come in here and you, you can modify these. Okay, certainly copy and paste. I'll just bring these all up, right click, paste. There we go. So it pushes those through into the different drawings. Now I'm, I'm good to go, okay? So that's our data manager. Great tool, great tool. Now if I, if I want to know where that pump is, or how about this tank right here? Let's, let's go ahead and find that one right there. I'll just click on that button right there. In a the perfect world, <laughs> it would take me there. Oh no, let's see, there's a button that needs to be turned on. There we go, okay, nope. I literally just installed this, so I got totally out of the box on this thing. There it is. There it goes. Okay. We were already looking at it. So there it goes. It took me right to it, huh? Okay. That's pretty neat. Take you right to it. So that's the that's the uh the equipment there. Let's grab uh have a, a tank on here. Let's let's build a tank. Okay, create. There we go. Change our head size. Cylinder size, shell size, maybe I want more in there, right? So it's from a manufacturing standpoint, you can get more exact with this thing. But grab uh, the, the different shells that you want. Right? Maybe this is three shelled, okay? One thing you won't be able to do on this is show where that seam is, okay? If you need that kind of level of manufacturing, then uh, I would suggest you utilize uh, the Autodesk Inventor tool to show where that seam is, okay? Create, add trim, okay, what do we got? Skirt, ring, platform, lugs, legs, flanges on there. So maybe on the bottom head, I could go ahead and add some legs to that. There we go, Ooh, let's go with legs, okay. And I can adjust what type is that. So I got some channel on there, okay. Elevation, maybe this is uh, four feet up. All right, let's see what we get. Ooh. Kind of ugly, but hey, <laughs> there she is, okay? You could keep building these, adjusting these. There's my different shells, right? You see that? Okay, certainly on there. Here we go. It is parametric, so I could right-click, modify the equipment, and go ahead and adjust the size of this now. Notice that I changed that diameter, and you can see that the D value has changed on every object. There we go, okay? Legs are a little out there, but we could adjust those too. I mentioned that Inventor program. The reason I say that is they do have this little button here, Convert Inventor Equipment. So if you are using that program, you could certainly bring in your, your uh, um, high detail um, Inventor tools here. Um, Certainly, I'd, I'd, I'd browse for that, Plant 3D. Maybe I got some inventor equipment. Let's see here. Let's see what we got. We'll give it one more try. I'll add one more after this. <laughs> we will find something, huh? Here we go. Okay. So this came out of the inventor package, right? There it is. And now you can pipe to this, okay? 
So we're able to bring that in a little bit, little bit more high-end detail from the Inventor tool. Now this, I mentioned from a manufacturing standpoint, why would I use Inventor? Well, Inventor would get us down into the, the, the nearest, call it 32nd if you want to, 64th, whatever, right? You can get in there, high precision, high tolerance. Uh, you can go in down into the, uh, um, here's uh, the threads on everything if you wanted to, okay? Now if you don't care about that, no big deal, okay? Because you can also build our drawings directly from here. So if I were to want to detail out, let's say this vessel right here, I do have inside the plant program the ability to create an orthographic drawing from these drawings. So I can create a new drawing, call it TK1001. And now I can create my different views of this, right? So new view plus the adjacent views, top, front, right, all that good stuff, and actually get everything drawn in there, dimension it up. Um, you can you can uh, call out your novels, right? Oh, it's a great tool, okay? So that's where the orthographic function will come in. I'm going to show you that a little bit later, but I'm just going to finish this up as far as the equipment goes, okay? So we got... We got our equipment in there. Now let's focus in on the piping, okay? So at this point, I, I, I get all my equipment laid out where I want it to go, and then now I can uh, start to, to start to pipe this up. I can, I can insert all my valves, and what's nice is I can do this from the tool palette, or I can base this off of what we call our PNID line list. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So if I grab our PNID line list, this says, hey, what is on our 3D? Or I'm sorry, what is on our 2D, okay? So what's on the 2D? Oops, I lost it. Oh, man. You might have seen that for just a split second, right? I'm kind of bugging this thing out. So it was on there. It'd say, hey, this is your P&ID line list. These are the, the, the functions that you have that you can place directly from the called out pipeline on your P&ID. Now, if you don't want to use that little line list, certainly it is okay to use this tool palette here based off your spec. Okay, I'll just grab this gate valve. That's socket low. Let's go with flange, raised face. So it's showing you it's a little small on, on the picture, but as soon as you hover over a pipeline, then this will actually size correctly to the pipe. Okay, let's see if we can make this happen. All right. She's going kind of slow here on the old internet. There she is. Okay. There it is, sized up. How do you want that actuator to look? Go ahead and kick that over if I wanted to. Okay, how far away? I could type a number in, you guys see that? How about, let's make it six feet away. Okay, type it in. There we go. Boom, okay. Gasket set, complete. Okay, so that's how I can place in items directly from there you go directly from our tool palette certainly piping made easy and you can see I just click on a plus sign to bring this out so far 10 feet over All right let's hey let's kick this upward instead All right we can go up some direction All right so they made it really really simple for us to uh, to pipe this, um, you just move your mouse in the appropriate direction, and uh, you could type in your values. Okay, let's let's try something from scratch here. Let's see what we could do. It's going to go in the close all. All right. So I got my structure. I got where my equipment goes, and then I pipe. All right, let's see here. So I might just grab in how about this test drawing. Okay, there's a structure. There's a whole lot of testing going on here. This is my test. <laughs> so I'll grab a pipeline number. Notice I got all my pipeline numbers. This is built in from the PNID. So we'll go with a 10 inch and a route pipe. Click. Okay, we want uh, how about 10 feet. Bring that over. 20 feet, there it is. Now, let's just go on the fly here. I want to uh, type in F, I'm gonna grab a valve. 
go to the ball valve butt weld. Okay, where do I want that? Right there. Set the actuator and keep on trucking on, okay? Now I could also stub this in or um, actually just build in one see if it tees off in here. There we go. There she is, okay? I could have selected the, the stub in option as well. Okay, change the direction. There we go. Looks good. Now if I do have a vessel on here like I've, I've, I've drawn already, let's see if we can copy this. Okay, complete with ladder structure, right, grading, looking good. I can grab these flanges and pipe out of there as well. Notice it as our uh, flange, this red circle is actually our, our uh, bolt set and gasket. So same thing, plus sign, keep going, bring her down a little bit, looks good. Okay, that's literally as easy as this gets. Let's combine the two, huh? Let's just bring that in. I'll just run that straight in. There it goes. It gives me a couple options. I can cycle through. Well, which one do you want? Gosh, we've got three different choices here. Mm. That'll work, except that one. There we go. Looks good. Okay. Maybe I don't like where that's located. I can certainly slide this in and out. Right? It'll increase my, my pipe length. Okay. Same thing here. Adjust our elevation. Maybe we have a specific value, okay? So top of pipe, bottom of pipe, center of pipe, I can toggle through this, say, yeah, type of, top of pipe should be six feet. There it goes. So it knows that with respect to zero, zero, okay? Certainly pipe supports, we've got a, an entire library in there as well. You can build your own too, okay? So hangers in there, stanchions, it's all good, trapeze. Let's see, let's just grab, uh, Grab that one right there, let's click. There we go. Notice how it sizes it automatically to the pipe. That's good, okay? Midpoint, boom. Very nice, okay? So that's our, uh, our, our pipe supports. You can also anchor these in. If you had uh, um, even sloped pipe, it'll, it'll uh, if you got a pipe hanger, it'll, it'll increase the length of that threaded rod so that you're looking good, okay? Maybe you did design something inside AutoCAD. You can you can have a pipe support in AutoCAD, tell it to be a pipe support, attach it, you're good to go. Same thing with equipment. If you built a uh, uh, vessel here, there we go, there's my vessel, okay? <laughs> it's an AutoCAD convert equipment vessel. Select, done, okay? Where's my base point? Sure, right there, okay? Now I can tag this thing appropriately and there's my tank. Looks great, okay? That's some basic stuff, but uh, you're not limited, okay? You, you, don't, you don't have to uh, follow exactly how this works. It's just AutoCAD. You've got a huge amount of customizability, okay? Now, moving forward, I've got all my, my piping, all my equipment. Uh, I've got uh, my structures placed in there. Let's go ahead and take a look at maybe what the, the overall master drawing could look like, okay? So certainly I got a little piece of concrete there, right, a little slab. That looks great, okay? So this is uh, maybe everything brought together. We just use extras for that. Real lightweight, things it, it behaves very, very fast. Uh, that's, uh, I think, the, the nice thing about the tool is just from a, a, a standpoint of, of you know, the, the speed, the ease of use, since it's very easy to navigate in and out and, and, uh, and, and find all your novels and hook up your piping. It, it works very, very well from there, okay? So let's, let's keep moving along. I know I'm talking fast. I know I'm saying stuff. We're running out of time, so I gotta get this thing going. So we're gonna look at the orthographic section, okay? Maybe I want to draw in now my top, front, right views, okay? Build the materials. Look at that, okay? Call it out. There it is. That's a, a 3D isometric, okay? Got all the the little tagging on here. This is just regular AutoCAD dimensions, right? You know, hey, well, hey, far, how far apart is this here? All right? Pull it out. Done. Okay, it's all scaled up real nice. These are little viewports, okay? You can tag these very, very simply. A little ortho annotate here. Oh, what is this thing? There it is. It's item 27, okay? There it goes, item 27, right? Item 27, there it is. Gate valve, double disc, boom, okay? I'm using boom a lot. Let's keep going. <laughs> tag all this. Gosh, that's great, okay? So it's just top, front, right, isometrics, okay? 
Now moving this into the actual isometric drawings, you grab the line list that you just created from the 3D. Okay, I've built all these in at, you know, line zero, zero, eight, lock it and issue it. It's ready for construction, okay? That's great from a manufacturing standpoint. Once this is locked down, it ain't moving, okay? It's, it's gonna stick, it's got a little lock that shows up and now it can create that production drawing which ends up looking like this. So I've got this hanging out. Here we go. Wait for it. Here we go. Just like so. So this drawing here is automatically generated by the program to create that 2.5D isometric based off of the line number that was used. So this is drawing number 2002-1, 2002-2, 3-1, and so on, okay? So it tells you what it's connected to, what uh, flange four, bolt set five, gasket six, which way does the uh, actuator go, the operator, what direction is it, is it supposed to be turning, um, connected to 300 pound class, uh, what else, uh, what, well, gate valve 216, it'll, it'll tell you what tank it's on, okay? I mean, gosh, you can call it every little thing from this ISO, they can cut everything ahead of time, right, bevel those up, um, thread it if they need to, uh, maybe it's for socket. Oh, there's my uh, my slope, okay? This is like our final hoorah, okay? You get all this drawn up, you grab these isometrics, you lock the line, you take this complete drawing package, and you send out your orthos, you send out your isos, and you start building, okay? So that's our workflow. That's what we got there, okay? So, you know, I just might just show this one last step here before we open up the questions, is hey, Next thing, you know, you, you, you're probably going to need an in-depth discussion as to how all this is shaken out. How can I use this tool so it applies to my particular manufacturing process? Maybe I need a tool like Vault. Maybe I, I need some custom specs, catalog symbols. We need to get all that together. Uh, that's stuff that Imagine It, we can help you out with that. We do that kind of stuff a lot where you come to us and we'll put together um, a, an official statement of work document Maybe you need us to come out a little bit, and, and we call it a strategic process review. We need to study how you do things, write things down. Here's where you are. This is where you want to go. Here's our game plan and our roadmap to get you where you need to be, okay? That's what I got there. So let's go ahead and uh, open this thing up for questions.